evangelistic work, uh, but now we're doing it full time. We're out every week. Last week we're in Virginia. The week before that we're in a little country church up on a hill in West Virginia. We mainly preach to uh, small churches and we mentor young preachers, trying to help them. Uh, we left. We started the Marinette Fellowship 36 years ago in the living room of a home. And when we were Resigned from pastoring that church, we had 2,000 people in a town of 8,500. My last year of ministry, uh, 2011, the last four years, the Lord broke loose, and we had 11 week revival. Yes, sir. Went 11 weeks. You didn't hear me, did you? When, did you hear me? Yes, sir. I, I didn't say 11 hours. I said 11 weeks. Yes, sir. Started in the first day of spring and went for 11 weeks. Uh, we had five drug addicts get saved the first night and someone passed a note to me and said, don't you think we ought to start a revival? And so I said, got up and said, how many will come if we start a meeting tomorrow and we'll only continue if somebody gets saved. Once nobody gets saved, we stop. And people were saved 80 day consecutive services. Hello? 687 people. One 91 year old woman got saved. Uh, husband and wife that were 71 years old got saved. We had, uh, we had, I think it was, uh, let me got a note here. We had, we had 62 saved in one service. In one service in a little town of 8,500 people. Had a, had a blind person healed. 44 years of pastoring. I'd heard about it, read about it, but I never saw a blind person healed. We had a blind lady got healed and served. Had a deaf person healed of deafness. Had a lady with a brain tumor, brought her x-ray. And, and the, the doctor was big huge. And uh, she was prayed for and she went back to the doctors and brought the second x-ray. And it was gone. Of course the doctor said, well the first one must have been mixed up or something. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Praise God. If you have your Bibles, we'll be going 95 mile an hour. Let me give you one scripture. We're going to go on 53rd chapter of uh, Isaiah. That's where we're going to be. But when, when, you, when you get over there, say amen. amen. We're going to be fast. Computer people down there with these computers. These, these young people all have computers. I still have a Bible. <laughs> Let me read one scripture to you. This is Good Friday. Philippians 2.8. We're going to go over to Isaiah. So stay over in Isaiah. Philippians 2 8 says, Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. He died. He didn't swoon. He died. He died. He stopped breathing. His spirit left. He died. Even the death of the cross. The cross. I'm not talking about what you wear around your neck as jewelry. He didn't die on some piece of jewelry. He died on an old rugged cross. Stay with me. The cross is God's mountain of mercy. Glory to God. The cross is God's altar of atonement. The cross is God's heel of hope. Is anybody here? Talk to me. Amen. I know me quiet when I'm preaching. <laughs> I want you to talk to me. The cross is where the Lamb of God was slain. Yes, the cross is where our pardon was signed. Yes, Did you hear me? Yes, it wasn't signed by the governor. It wasn't signed by the president. It was signed by Jesus on the cross. Yes. The cross is where God's justice was satisfied. Yes, sir. I'm sick and tired of hearing people tell me when I witness to them, well, I, I, I'm as good as he is. And, and I'm as good as she is. I'm going to tell you, your goodness is as filthy rags. Yes, I don't care how long your hair is, how long your dress is. Don't matter to me how long your sleeve is. Your righteousness is as filthy rag. You'll not make it on your goodness. Did you hear me? You'll not make it on you being a Baptist or a Nazarene or Christ fellowship. You only make it through the cross. Yes, I'm preaching about the cross. Yes, the cross is where our ransom was paid. Yes, the devil owned us. Lock, stock, and bearer be owned us. You're looking cute tonight. He owned you. The cross is where the ransom was paid. The cross is where the Savior died and salvation was born. It's no wonder that the Apostle Paul screams out from the pages of God's Word, I glory in nothing save the cross. 
You know, Paul writing says one place, he says, I am the chief of all sinners. Did you realize what he said? He didn't say I was the chief of all sinners. He said, present tense, I am the chief of all sinners. Hello? You look cute. Adjust your halo right now. <laughs> it's all about Jesus. Yes, sir. It's not about your goodness. It's not. About, it's, it's all about. It doesn't matter about the hours you pray. It won't get you to heaven. Doesn't matter about. Oh, and I believe in prayer. Doesn't matter how many hours you read the word. It won't get you to heaven. I grew up in the holiness church. I believe in holiness, but there was something declared, probably the way I interpreted, it, rather than the way it was preached. But I interpreted it as though Jesus saved me. But, but I got. I got to do something. To be saved. You can't do nothing to be saved. You can't do You can't do it. So brother, right, I, 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 we gotta obey God. I want to tell you something. The only way you get to heaven is by the grace of God. <laughs> Glory to God. See, you can rest in that, but you can't rest when you feel like you gotta you gotta pray another hour, you gotta read another hour, and, and that's good. But, but if you're not careful, you're under so much pressure, you're never at rest in Jesus. There remains a rest for God's people. We ought not be uptight, we ought to be resting in His grace. Let's go to Isaiah 53. Who has believed our report? To whom will the arm of the Lord reveal? Well, the arm of the Lord is revealed only to those that believe. Do you know in the Old Testament, God will say this You do this, and I'll do this. It was everything that God did for God's people in the Old Testament was conditional on something they did. Yes. But in the New Testament, I'm not under the law, I'm under grace. Amen. In the New Testament, the only thing you've got to do is believe. Yes, sir. Yes. Do you want to know who the arm of the Lord is revealed to? To them that believe the report. Yes, sir. It's that simple. Let's read. Verse 2. For he, talking about Jesus, for he shall grow up before him, before his father, as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He's just a, he's just a man as the eye beholds him, born of a virgin. He has no form or calmness, no beauty. And when we see, there's no beauty. Isn't that amazing? Let's read on. That we should desire him. He is despised. Despised. And rejected. Rejected means he's forsaken. By men. He's a man of sorrow. Do you see that in verse 3? He's a man of sorrow. That literally in the Hebrew means pain. Anybody here ever suffer pain? Get your hand up. I love old people. <laughs> I love old people. You know why I love old people? I am one. I'm a car-carrying old person. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You, when you're a young preacher, you preach a lot of stuff that when you become older, <laughs> you, you find out that what you preach when you were young has nothing to do with the real life. Are you with me? Because in this life, you're going to have some pain. Jesus suffered pain. And he was acquainted, verse 3, with grief. Grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. We despised. He was despised. And we didn't esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs, that's sicknesses. And he's carried our sorrows, that's pains. And we esteemed him stricken, smitten, smitten, what is that? Struck down yes, by who? God. You've never been struck down by God. You don't want to be struck down by God. But Jesus was. Struck down. Who wouldn't serve a Savior like him? Smitten by God and afflicted, he was wounded for our transgressions. A 
I'll go to verse 4. Surely he bore our griefs, carried our sorrows, esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, afflicted, but he was wounded. Wounded. For our transgression, our sins, every one of our sins. Past, present, and future. Every sin. You have committed, you are committing, you will commit. I like when someone says, I, I, I preached one time years ago, and a lady stood up and said, I'm saved and sanctified and above temptation. Take a picture of her. <laughs> what? Do, do you have that concept that when you're sanctified, you're above temptation? Jesus wasn't above temptation. No, 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 no. The devil will always be trying to tempt you. But the devil's a liar. Yes. Wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities, chastised for our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. We like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid, laid on him the iniquity. Do you see that word? The iniquity of us all. That word iniquity means guilt. It's a Hebrew word that means guilt. It not only means guilt, it means He punished. He punished Jesus for your guilt. The cross, listen to me, the cross was no accident. If you read the Scriptures, Jesus is called the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. The plan of salvation, the cross, was planned before the world was ever spoken in. we got a mighty God on our side. The plan culminated in a divine ordained exchange. That's what I'm going to talk about to you. Which would take place at the cross. Exchange. A divine exchange took place at the cross. If I've got a product and, 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 and you give me money for that product and I give you the product, there was an exchange there. Yes. We don't hardly know anything about exchanges anymore because we buy everything with credit cards. When you give somebody a cash, they always ask you to just be on credit. J.C. Penney say, do you want one of our cards? I don't want one of your cards. I want to pay cash. And they say, what's that? That's a, that's a monetary exchange. Well, on the cross, there was a divine exchange. And most pew setters sitting in the church have no idea what took place on the cross. A divine exchange took place in our benefit. I like that. Yes, I don't know about you, but I like free. Yes, sir. Anybody here? <laughs> Glory to God. Stay with me now. All the wrath and the punishment do us. See, if you think you're pretty good, you don't think you're due any wrath. But I could get with you one on one, I don't care who you are, and we could go down the Ten Commandments, and somewhere down that line, you've broken one of them. And Paul says if you break one of them, you broke them all. Yes, sir. Then nobody here had broken one of God's commandments. From the pulpit to the pews. And when you break God's commandments, when you break God's law, you gotta be punished. Yes, sir. So all the wrath. And all the punishment due us for our sinfulness came upon Jesus. And all the good due to Jesus, due to his sinless obedience, comes to us. What a deal I've got for you tonight. Yes, sir. Kick the tires on this thing. Stay with me now. The innocent Jesus would bear the just punishment of the guilty. That's us. Say that's us. That's us. Take your day and say that's me. That's us. And the guilty would receive all the benefits due to the just one whose name is Jesus. Yes. The whole gospel centers around the cross. Yes, sir. Do you know <laughs> churches today are building buildings and not putting crosses on them? They don't want any pictures of the crosses anywhere. You know why? Because they say, this is what they say. They say it makes people feel uncomfortable. Oh, Lord, the Lord, we ought to feel uncomfortable. Amen. 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 It's called user friendly. They don't want anything in the building that's going to make anybody. My Lord, I got saved because I got under old fashioned Holy Ghost conviction. And I knew I was going to hell. And I knew the only way out 
was Jesus. Y'all watch out, I'm gonna get excited. So, so the whole gospel, the good news, it's good news. Yes, sir. It's not bad news, it's good news. The whole gospel centers around the cross. The, the work of Calvary is a perfect work. You can't do one thing to add to the perfect work of Calvary. When, when Jesus said, it is finished, yes, that was not a cry of a hopeless person giving up, throwing in the towels, quitting and dying. It was a cry from the victorious Savior who says it's complete. It's done. It's finished. <laughs> oh, that make you, that'll make a Baptist shout. I'm here to tell you. Perfect in every respect. Perfect in every aspect. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. The work of the cross of Christ Jesus is perfect in every respect. You cannot add one thing to it. Right. I feel for people who are still bound by the Old Testament covenant of the law. Right. I'm under the new covenant. Yes, sir. It's a covenant of grace. Yes, sir. Justice is when you get what you deserve. Yes. You ought to, ought to take my chances. You ain't got no chances. <laughs> you know, say, man, you know, I'll just, I'll just take my chance, man. You ain't got no chance. You, you're heading to hell if you get justice. Yes, sir. Mercy. See, a lot of people think mercy and grace are the same thing. No, 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 no. Mercy. Now, justice is when you get what you deserve. Mercy is when you don't get what you deserve. Yes, Anybody glad for mercy? Yes, sir. Grace. Is when you get what you don't deserve. Oh, glory to God. Did you hear me? Mercy is when I don't get what I deserve. That's I don't get hell. That's mercy right there. Heaven is when that's grace. Heaven is grace. That means I'm getting something that I don't deserve. You don't deserve heaven. Say, preacher, you're a man of God. You're a man of the cloth. You're a man of the sacred death. That don't get you to heaven. There are preachers going to hell right now. There's singers and musicians going to hell by now. Only one thing will get me to heaven. That's the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. Let me give you some aspects of the divine exchange that I hope when you leave this house, you will have a deeper appreciation of what Jesus did for you on the cross. See, he was born to die. He was born to die. We get caught up in his miracles. We get caught up in him walking on the water, calming the storm. If that's all he did, Elijah did miracles. He did. Elijah, God used Elijah to bring somebody back from the dead. Lepers were healed. No, 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 no. Jesus was born to die. Perfect sacrifice. Yes. Let's look at it. First, number one. This is a divine exchange. Jesus was punished. That we might be pardoned. The wrath of God is either going to be poured out on you, or you're going to get a substitute that the wrath of God is poured out on. It, it's, it's, it, it's an example all through the Old Testament. The lambs died by the hundreds of thousands. But God wasn't looking for the lamb. You, you can't. When the Passover, the Jews are celebrating the Passover right now. When the Passover came, a lot of people, they center in on the lamb. God didn't say, when I see the lamb, I'll pass over. Come on, somebody. No, 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 no. He wasn't looking for the lamb. He was looking for the blood. He said, when I see, when I see the blood, I'll pass over. Jesus was punished. Anybody ever see the Passion of the Christ? I saw it again just recently. I can't hardly watch it. It doesn't even, it doesn't even come close to portray the punishment that was poured out on Jesus. We quote John 3.16, God so loved the world that He gave. What it means when He gave, that means He gave Him to the cross. Yes, sir. But nobody here would give your children no. to, 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 to be punished for somebody else. 
Jesus was punished. So do you and I can be pardoned. Stay with me. Ephesians, number one, verse seven. In him, Jesus, we have redemption. Through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. According to the riches of his grace. We're saved because Jesus was punished and shed his precious blood to redeem us. I've never been in a pawn shop, but in the pawn shop, you, you take an item in there and you turn it over, they give you a ticket. And when you get enough money, you can come back and redeem that item, right? Yes, but you have to have enough to pay the price to redeem that item. The only thing that can redeem me and you was the blood of Jesus. Yes. And when God sees the blood, I believe that the blood is mysteriously and mystically applied to your heart and your soul and your spirit by the Holy Ghost. And when God sees the blood applied to your heart, He passes over. Yes. Oh, when you breathe your last breath and you face a holy God, you're going to be thankful that the blood of Jesus was shed on the cross and He was punished so that you could be pardoned. Forgiven. Hey, I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm forgiven. See, you, you know me now. You know you see me here. God knows every sin ever to me. And I'm forgiven. Glory to God. You can bring in, you can bring in witnesses that well, I knew. I they used to call me Jimmy. BC, BC before Christ. They called me Jimmy. And, and you could bring in people and say, Well, I don't remember when Jimmy did this and Jimmy did that. But I will tell you this. I don't remember that. That's right. In the Old Testament, their sins were covered. And anything that's covered can be uncovered. My sins are not just covered, my sins are cleansed. And God tells me in Jeremiah, not only are my sins covered and cleansed, but he says, I remember them, oh my Lord and my God. He chooses to remember my sins no more. Aren't you happy? Yes, sir. All because of the blood that was shed on the cross. Yes, sir. Number two, Jesus was wounded that we might be well. Jesus was wounded that you may be whole. Jesus was wounded that you might be healed. Glory to God. Those stripes were wounds. When the, when the Roman soldiers whipped our Lord and Savior with that cat of nine tails and had the, the bones at the end of it, it lashed flesh out. He began to bleed. Most Roman whippings, no one survived. It was a miracle that Jesus survived the flogging of the Roman soldiers. It was a miracle that he was able to get up from that flogging and to put a cross on his back and to carry it until someone helped him. Aren't you glad that someone helped him? Yes. But they didn't help him to save him. They only helped him to carry that piece of wood until he got to Calvary. And every strike that was laid on his back is for your wellness. He wants you well. He wants you whole. Don't you ever believe a lie of the devil that God wants you sick? Because this is what we start saying. I'm going to preach to you. I'm the evangelist now. Praise God. No anonymous letters. I come in and I'm out in the morning. Glory to God. But stay with me here a minute. This is what this is the thinking that the world's got into the church. Well. I'm being punished for God. That's why I'm sick. Well, I know that you can do things to your body. And what you sow is what you reap. I know that. I know that you don't. You need to take care of your body. I know that. But I'm here to tell you that the lie of the devil is that you're being punished for your sins. If you're being punished for your sins, what in the world did Jesus take? Yes, sir. Hello? Did you hear me? Turn your hearing aid up. If you think you're being punished for your sins, why did Jesus go through what he went through? You're not being punished for your sins. Jesus was punished for your sins. And by his wounds, you're healed. Let me give you scripture. Of course, Isaiah, I just read it to you, 53 verse 5. But 1 Peter 2.24, New Testament, New Covenant. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree. That we had died to sins. 
might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. In, in, in June of 2009 at Myrtle Beach, my heart stopped six times. Six times it stopped. We, we had all of our grandkids there. All of our kids were there. Their wives were there. And, and uh, the Widowmaker. If you've ever heard of the Widowmaker, you don't live through the Widowmaker. That's why they call the Widowmaker. And I, I, I was feeling bad. And I checked my blood pressure very high. I told my wife to call 911. They were there within minutes. And, and when they were hooking me up to EKG, I was gone. I was gone. Now, when, you, when your heart stops, they only bring you back three times. Because you know, three strikes in your Talk to me, church. Come on, talk to me. Well, I'm so glad in South Carolina, those old boys can't count. So they couldn't remember if it was two or three or four or five. Six times my heart stopped. They took, went to the first hospital and they, and, and, and they didn't have a program unit, so they sent me 20 miles away to the, to the second hospital. And they told my wife, uh, it doesn't look good, you're not going to make it. But my times are in God's hands. And I'm here to tell you, when you're, when you're under God's grace, the devil can't kill you. My times are not in the devil's hands. My times are in God's hands. You read the word of God. He knows my beginning from my end. Now the devil may try to kill you, but I'm blessed and happy faith. Well, why in the world would God allow you to go through something like that? So I can stand here and tell you, by His stripes I'm healed. Because if you've never gone through anything, if you've never had a test, you don't have a testimony. That's right. You want blessings without a battle. That's crazy. This is this is enemy territory we're in. But thank God we got a wonderful Savior. And by His stripes, I'm healed. If you've ever been healed by the stripes of Jesus, raise your hands and just wave in there so, so the devil knows who you are. Did you hear what I said? I know one time somebody said, Preacher, you better quit preaching like that. The devil's going to he's gonna get mad at you. He's already mad. Number one, he got mad because I got saved. Number two, he's mad because I'm preaching the truth. For the truth will set you free. See, in the church, we don't realize this divine exchange that took place on the cross. Let me give you another one. Jesus was made sin with our sinfulness that we might be made righteous with His righteousness. Yes. See, we think we're righteous because we read, pray, witness, and obey. It doesn't make you righteous. Brother Wright, you're preaching against what Brother Hill taught. No, no. Reading the Bible and praying and witnessing does not save you. Because if you think that saves you, that means that you're saved by something you're doing. And you're saved only by what Jesus did for you on the cross. That's it. Did you hear it? Well, why should we read and witness and obey? Because I love my wife. And I'll do anything I can to be a blessing to her. The reason why you read is you want, to, you want to know more about Jesus. The reason why you pray, you want to be in communication. See, everything you do for Jesus is not saving you. It's because you love Him. It's a love relationship. The Apostle Paul said, if you can move mountains with your faith and you don't have love, it's a waste of time. If you give every bit of your money away to help the poor and you don't have love. See, what we're in is not a love relationship. And Jesus said, it, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Oh. About to get on in that. You, you, you're, not, you're not keeping his commandments to keep yourself safe. You're keeping his commandments because you're in a love relationship with him. And I love him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep his commandments. And he, he's only got two commandments. He's only got two. I mean, it's not the, 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 the Pharisees had six hundred, and they choose to pick which one they want to keep. We only have two. What are they? Love God. All your soul, heart, mind, and strength, and love each other. If the church would ever get hold of the second one, we'd have revival. Yes. Love each other. See, you can't condemn me because Jesus was condemned for me. 
You try to condemn me, and I can receive it and let it condemn me if I want to. But I choose not to. So just keep your stuff. Don't put your junk on me. Did you hear me? Because I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. Anybody blessed and highly favored? I'd love to talk to you and say, I'm blessed and highly favored. Say it like you mean, I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm tired of going to church and feeling guilty. I'm tired of going to church and feeling lost. I'm tired of going to a meeting and every time I go to a meeting, I feel condemned and lost. I've lost it now, I can tell. I mean, I'm saying, I'm resting Jesus. It's, it's by His grace. You've got to get a hold of God's grace. Ephesians, second chapter, verse 8 says that we're saved by grace, that through faith, and it's not of itself. It's a gift. A gift is a gift. A gift, you don't earn it, you don't deserve it, you can't work for it. It's a gift. And it's not of yourself, because if it was of yourself, if you could get to heaven because of you being so wonderful, then you'd brag about it. That's what it says in Ephesians. Let me read 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he, God the Father, made him, Jesus the Son, who know, he knew no sin. This is 2 Corinthians 5, 21. God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in Jesus. Yes. You're not righteous because I just came, my wife and I have been five weeks in Sarasota, Florida. Why did I come back? <laughs> just snow everywhere, snow everywhere. In Florida, if it gets 60, they say it's chilly. I tell them in Florida, you don't know what cold is. Get up on the plains in Indiana when it's zero and the wind's blowing. But I saw all these people everywhere. In Sarasota, Florida, the Amish yeah. have taken over the city. <laughs> and they don't have horses and buggies because the government won't let them. They ride free wheel bicycles. You've never seen anything in your life. And you see an Amish woman with, a, with a, her hair covered in a long dress ride a free wheel bicycle. And, and, and I appreciate the Amish. And I appreciate their modesty. But if any way, shape, or form, they think that the way they dress and don't drive a car or they don't do it, if, if that's going to get them to heaven, they're wrong. Nice. They're wrong. It will not get them to heaven. Right. I appreciate their modesty. I, I appreciate modest people. I appreciate people who, who are very conservative. Right here, tell you, that won't get you to heaven. Right. Say, Brother Wright, you're making me mad. That means I'm getting through to you. <laughs> you got to get hold of the love of God. Yes, that Jesus, who, who was born of a virgin, he didn't have he didn't have sin nature in him. But when he hung on the cross, he didn't make one misstep. He never, he never said one word out of line. He always did the Father's will. He was perfect. He was the perfect sinless sacrifice. But on that cross, God laid on him all the sins of the world, the present world, the past world, and the future world. what agony he went through. He knew no sin and the sin was on him. It wasn't in him. It was on him. Sin's in us. But it was on him. So the sin in us could be taken out by the blood of Jesus. I wish I had preach. Our sins were imputed. Yes. Placed on him. So his righteousness. Look at this divine exchange. His righteousness. I gave him my sins. And he gave me his righteousness. I'm righteous right now because of the divine exchange that took place on Calvary. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're righteous because of a divine exchange when Jesus took on your sins and you, by believing, I'm not preaching universalism. 
Yeah. I'm not preaching just because Jesus died, everybody saved. You gotta believe in him. Yes, sir. You gotta confess your sin. Yes, sir. You gotta accept him as your savior. Yes, sir. And then you take on his righteousness. Man, you can rest in that. <laughs> you know who your last enemy is? Death. Death. See, I've been there six times. I said, peace. I wasn't afraid. You know where the devil fights you? Fights you with death. Oh, yes, he does. See, when you're young, you don't think about dying. Like you can live forever. <laughs> It ain't going to work. I looked at a casket the day before yesterday. 28 year old boy raised at the Maranatha Fellowship. Died in Kroger's. More than likely went over those. Broke arm. Looking at a casket of a 28 year old. See, when you're out from under the blood, you're a pawn in the devil's hand. Yes, sir. Did you hear me? You got no protection. The only thing that protected Israel when the death angel passed over was the blood was on the doorpost. But the blood's not on the doorpost of my house. The blood's on my heart. Yes, sir. And I'm righteous. Yes, sir. When God looks at me, see when I say that right now, the devil says you're a liar. The devil's telling me right now. I'm trying to tell you that, that, that you're not righteous. You do this, you do that. I am righteous. I'm righteous because I had a divine exchange. I gave Jesus my sins. He gave me his righteousness. What a deal. Yes. I said what a deal. Yes. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Yes. Who wouldn't get excited when you say it? Who wouldn't get excited when you read the word? Yes. Yes. Number four, Jesus died our death that we might live his life. Yes. <laughs> Galatians 2.20 I've been crucified with Christ yes, It is no longer I live But Christ lives in me And the life which I now live in the flesh I live by faith yes, By faith, not feelings yes. I live by faith In the Son of God who loved me You know, gave himself for me Hebrews 2.9 But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels For the suffering of death Crowned with glory and honor That he by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. Thank you. So this exchange is, Jesus died my death, that I might live His life. Yes, sir. If you go through that door, you enter to the outside. Death for the child of God is entrance That's right. into God's heaven. Tomorrow night, if you come, I'm going to preach, the Lord willing, on where was Jesus for three days and three nights. <laughs> I can't wait. See, the night Michael, Pastor Michael Douglas got saved. I preached in this little church in Otwell, Indiana. But it was packed. It was a good Friday. It was packed. And when he, when he came in, there was only one seat left. It was up front. <laughs> but quite Elijah, a black uh, minister, he, he was singing that night. And he thought he was saved. He's on the front row. If you're on the front row, you're saved. Automatically. <laughs> you get a free pass. Go on the front row. Back row, uh, I don't know. But old Dwight Elijah got right in the pastor Michael's face and sang to him. Thought he was saved. Well, my first sermon that night was there's secret preach in the church. Yes, sir. He loved it. <laughs> well, he did. I mean, that sinner was amen to me because I was preaching hypocrites in the church. <laughs> when I got done, I was finished. I said, I, I was finished. And the Lord told me, he said, get up. This way he said, get up and tell him what I went through on the cross. So I got up and preached for about 15 minutes what Jesus endured on the cross. He, he wasn't happy about that. <laughs> and when the invitation came, he's on the front row. Stand up, brother. Just look this way. The altar is. The altar is up front. Michael said that someone was pushing him during the invitation. And in fact, he turned around. He's getting ready to tell the guy behind him, you get your hands off me right now, brother. <laughs> to, 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 to do what? Pushing him. Yeah. It was the Holy Ghost. Pushing him. No, pushing him. See, the Holy Ghost is encouraging you to give your heart to Jesus. Pushing it. Praise God. 
with the dead. <laughs> Three times I put the body through and go. Is anybody here glad that 30 years ago on Good Friday? Get real with you right now. You wouldn't be here if you hadn't got saved. This building wouldn't be here if you hadn't got saved. Isn't that amazing? If Jesus hadn't died on the cross and Michael hadn't got saved that night, he probably would be dead. If he would have continued his lifestyle, he would have been dead. Do you see what this exchange did for him that night? He didn't realize what exchange was going on, but it was an exchange. Jesus took his death and gave him his life. See, when you breathe your last breath, only this dies. But I live on. I live on and on and on. Reverend Lauren Helm's gone. Dr. Carl Roundtree, gone. Reverend Robert Morgan, gone. My mentors, they're gone. And now I'm mentoring young preacher. Because what you perceive freely, you're supposed to give it. And it's so exciting to know that this life that he's given us. Can you imagine when we're in heaven and we see each other again? We're going to know each other. We're going to know each other. It's amazing. Everybody in the room, from the little baby, five weeks old, is born to die. It's born to die. But the death that Jesus took was a spiritual, eternal death. And now, I get eternal life. I love Jesus. Anybody love him? Yes. I'm all hurry. Jesus was made a curse so that we could receive the blessing. He was made a curse. Let me give you a scripture. Galatians, third chapter, verse 13 and 14. Christ purchased our freedom. This is an amplifier. Redeeming us from the curse of the law. You can't keep the law. Only Jesus. He said, I didn't come to destroy the law. He said, I came to complete it. He completed the law. You can't, I can't, he did. Watch this. And he became a curse for us so that we can receive his blessing. I'll read on. Christ purchased our freedom. Redeeming us from the curse of the law. Becoming a curse for us. For it is written in the scriptures. Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That means he's crucified. Yes. So when he's hanging on that cross. He's taken every curse. That was on my life. Have you ever heard people say. Well, you know. Alcoholism runs in that thing. His grandpa was a drunk. His dad's a drunk. Guess what? He won't be a drunk too. Yes. Divorce runs in that family. They, 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 far back, I remember they've all been divorced. Hello? He's a gambler. You know his daddy was a gambler. His grandpa was a gambler. You know what? He's going to die a gambler. Yes. Not me. No. Every curse that was in the right family... was put on Christ when He died on the cross so every blessing that He deserves because He lived a sinless life He puts on mine. Oh, I'll take that. Yes, sir. Let me tell you something you probably haven't heard me say recently. I'm blessed and highly favored. Amen. Amen. Let me give you some strength. Genesis 24 verse 1. It says Abraham is an old man. I love old people. Yes, sir. Abraham is an old man. This is Genesis 24 verse 1. This is what it says. Abraham is an old man. Watch this. And the Lord has blessed Abraham in all things. That's what it says. Genesis 24 verse 1. He's an old man now. And the Lord has blessed him in all things. That means... That Abraham was blessed in every area of his life. Every area of his life he was blessed. Now I'm going to take you over to Galatians 3rd chapter verse 29. If you are in Christ. Anybody in Christ? That's me. 
If you are in Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. Yes, sir. And heirs <coughs> according to the promise. Yes, what promise is that? The promise is this. I'll bless you and I'll make you a blessing. That was the promise to Abraham. I'll bless you and I'll make you a blessing. Matter of fact, I'll bless anybody that blesses you. Yes, sir. And I'll curse anybody that curses you. I'm blessed and highly favored. Yes, sir. I'm a snotty nosed boy, grew up in Nitro, West Virginia, and went to Sunday school because they built a gymnasium, and the only way you could get in the gymnasium is you went to Sunday school. And I got spiritual. <laughs> and one dream I had all my ministry of 44 years was to build a gymnasium so little kids could come and play that gymnasium and get saved like I got saved. Before I retired from pastoring, we built a two million four hundred thousand dollar gymnasium with a fitness center and saunas and lockers and a, and a rolling room and, a, and it's 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 amazing it's amazing and it's paid for. Yes, I'm gonna tell you if you're in Christ, He took your curse. Yes, the curse ended with Christ on the cross. If you believe, I believe that means all the blessings of Abraham are now on me. What a divine. Change. Yes, he took my curse. I got his blessing. Yes, sir. You say you didn't earn that. That's, right. That's, good. That's what's called grace. Yes, sir. Quit trying to earn it and just receive it and believe it. Yes, if I begin to tell you all the ways God has blessed my wife and I, some of you in the church world get jealous. I can't even tell certain people the blessings that God's given me because when you start telling them, the people, well, who do you think he is? I know who I am. The problem is, you don't know who I am. <laughs> Did you hear me? That sounds like right. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. There was a divine exchange to a place at the cross. Jesus Christ bore all of my curses. And then he gave me all of his blessings. If you're not getting blessed, I'm wrong. You better start believing for the blessing. Well, I, I think if you start getting blessed, you know, you, you get proud, and, and so you ought, you ought not get that much blessed. Get out of line. <laughs> I love buffets. <laughs> no, I love buffets. I'm a, I'm a charter member of the Golden Crowd. <laughs> and I love buffets. Did I tell you I love buffets? But one thing, pray for me, would you? <laughs> you go into a buffet, go crowd. You go into a buffet, and and almost every time in front of me is some little skinny person. They ought not be loud at the buffet. They ought not laugh at the buffet. And, and, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, pray for me. And, 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 and sure enough, I'll be behind them, I'll have my plate. And this is what these skinny people do. I wonder if that tastes good. I wonder what that looks like. <laughs> you can come back <laughs> and they're looking for five minutes I didn't come to the buffet to look I come to put it on my plate <laughs> put it on your plate move on if you don't like it they won't get mad <laughs> just put it on your plate or get out of people start telling me well, I don't think you ought to be blessed like that you know well get out of <laughs> I'm, I'm a Kenyan. I'm sending out doubters all the time, preaching to a bunch of doubters, and they're saying, well, I doubt that, I doubt that, I doubt that, and I doubt it. We get out of line. If you get out of line, I do that. I don't drink coffee. I'm sanctified. I don't drink coffee. It won't get me to heaven, but I don't drink coffee. But all my staff drink coffee, and they love to go to Starbucks. Pay $100 for a cup of coffee. And, and they give you a number. They give you a number. You pull a number, and it tells you your number, 423. And you look up on the wall, and there's a, there's a little sign up there that tells you who they're serving. Number four. Well, the only way I'm going to stay somewhere.
somewhere, if I'm 423 and there's certain four, is if I want what they're giving out long enough to wait for. It. Yes, sir. So if I'm in there, I'm going to be praying. What number you got? Oh, you're 24. You, you know what? If I was you, I wouldn't wait that long. God, I wouldn't wait that long. For a cup of coffee, go to McDonald's. Yeah, go to McDonald's. And see, if he gets out of line, guess what? I moved up. So if you don't want the blessing, would you tonight, when you, when you kneel down at your bed, would you pray, Lord, just give my blessing to Brother Wright? Because if I get it, it'll make me too humble. And it, he won it. I want it. I want every blessing. I want every blessing. It is said you live and die for Christ and miss blessings. I've often wondered, well, why in the world is the Lord going to have to wipe away tears from our eyes when we get to heaven? There's lots of theories, lots of ideas. One of the ideas that I've got is you never claimed your blessing. You just said, well, you know, my dad didn't have it, my grandpa didn't have it, and I don't guess I'll have it. Get out of line. You've got to be a believer. And I believe that he took my curse so that I could receive his blessing. And I am of the seed of Abraham, and that means that Abraham's blessing is on me. Yes, sir. We gave every mark evangelist. About two or three years ago, we gave him a conversion van. We gave him a conversion van. I mean, it had a TV conversion van. We gave it to him. And we gave it to him in the name of Jesus. That's why I sow every seed I sow. I sow in the name of Jesus. Yes. Well, if you sow tomatoes in a few more weeks, what do you expect to get in the fall? Amen. I thought you farmers in Indiana knew something. In West Virginia, they'd expect corn. <laughs> So what you sow is what you're going to reap. Yes, sir. That's positive as well as negative. Yes. But we sow the conversion van. So about a year and a half later, a man called me up and said, Brother Wright, the Lord has told us that we're to buy you a conversion van. Oh, I'm, I'm unworthy. And I, we don't deserve that. And we appreciate the offer. But we, just, we just can't receive that because... We're just not worthy for it. We're just, we're just not, we're just, we, we can't receive it. Get out of line. <laughs> See, I used to be that way. And the devil would say, you're humble. That's not humility, that's stupidity. <laughs> that's stupidity. Man, go get me a conversion van. My dad didn't raise a fool. I may be from West Virginia, but I ain't no fool. I sold a van, and what did I expect to get? A van. I wasn't shocked. I'm blessed. I'm blessed and highly favored. I love Corvettes. Is any of you, who may be on the Corvette? Anybody on the Corvette in the house? She owns one. You can be in my club. I've loved Corvettes since I was a young kid. Oh, I tell you, I've loved Corvettes. I just, I, I, I just, I like Corvettes, you know. But you know, being a preacher, you can't have a Corvette because if you had a Corvette, that'd make you proud. Get out of line! <laughs> we retired from pastor. Time to allow evangelist. I don't know if you know, but I'm evangelist. And and for this past Christmas, uh, my wife got me a Corvette. Red Corvette. <laughs> Doesn't have an engine, but it's a red Corvette. <laughs> it's a 1991 red Corvette convertible. I'm blessed and highly favored. Church, I personally believe that you can get off into two extremes. You, you get, but, but the church I, I witness is at the other extreme. It's at the other extreme. I believe that God wants to bless us. And if you'll delight yourself in the Lord, He'll give you the desires 
of your heart. So if you're in West Virginia and passing through and you see a red Corvette go by you, you say, that's Pastor White. Then say, he's blessed and highly favored. Say amen. amen. Then I have five minutes of your time. Yes, sir. Jesus suffered our poverty that we might share his provisions. West Virginia people believe that you're supposed to be poor. I don't believe that. I don't believe everybody's going to be a millionaire. But I believe that my God is a God of more than enough. And I believe that when he fed 10,000 on a hillside with a little boy's lunch, that he had 12 baskets left over. And he had 12 baskets left over because my God is El Shaddai. He's a God that always has more than enough. Let me give you a scripture for this. Jesus suffered our poverty that we could share in his provision. It's going to blow your mind. 2 Corinthians 8 chapter verse 9. For you know the grace. There it is. It says it again. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus that though he was rich. Jesus wasn't rich. What you talking about? I look around and people got gold on their fingers. They got gold on their wrists. They got gold in their ears. They got gold around, around their, their neck. But in heaven, they paved the streets with it. They paved the streets with gold. Some of you women when you get to heaven, that's what you're going to do. You're going to drop down and start chunking gold out there and put it around your neck. Where 25 people, it's nothing. It's pavement in heaven. How rich is Jesus? How rich is he? Watch this. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor that you through his poverty might be made rich. Amen. Well, how would you define rich? Rich. <laughs> I'm rich spiritually. I have rich peace. I have rich rest. I have rich love. I'm rich. There's people out in the world who've got mansions. They're not happy. My wife and I live in an 18 square foot home, one level. Thank God it's one level. When you get older, I love old people. You don't want steps. You people who are young and steps, your day's coming. You won't want steps when you're 102 years old. You'll take the dining room and make it your bedroom. Because you can't get to the top floor. <laughs> Talk to them. Yes. Well, we got more than we need. To be rich in the kingdom is when you have enough to take care of your needs and you have an excess so you bless somebody else. I remember the day that we didn't have... Brother Hamilton took up an offering one time. And, 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 and how much did we have? 22 cents. And we put, I'm talking about, we didn't have nothing. We didn't have nothing and no charges. And we didn't have nothing. We didn't have no savings account, no CD. 22 cents. Put it in the offering. Put it in the offering in Jesus' name. I didn't get up and say, I'm going to tell you something. I gave them 22 cents. I'm like, we've got to make it home. Somebody better help us. I'm a preacher. I'm a man of God. You're a man of the cloth. Somebody help me. I didn't say that. Put 22 cents in there. Didn't say nothing to nobody. Four left the room. Four left the room. Had $200. Hello? What bank do you know that's going to give you $200 for your 22 cents? Hello? Are you awake? Get to the altar. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? Do you still love me? Jesus endured my guilt that I might share in His glory. Jesus endured my shame that I could share in His splendor. No death was more shameful than the crucifixion. I want to tell you something. He was stripped naked on the cross. They shamed Him. I know you've seen movies, Loin Claw, stripped naked. Why do you think God turned the lights out and it was dark? So no one could see his son in his nakedness. The shame that I should have bore, he bore so I could share his splendor. 
what an exchange. Shame. You know what? No one could look upon him because he looks so pitiful. Crown of thorns, blood, his back on his side. I had no idea the Romans turned him over and whipped him on the front side too. Hanging there. Jesus said something that you'll never see anywhere. Every time throughout the Gospels that Jesus talked about God, he said, My Father, my Father, you what you read. But when he was hanging on the cross, he didn't say, My Father, he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was forsaken so you and I could be accepted. Came unto his own, and his own received him not. Rejected. Yes. Rejected. You know that he died so that I could be reconciled. When you're when you're lost, you're a bitter enemy of God. He loves you, but you're an enemy. And reconciliation is when an enemy becomes a friend. Thank you, Lord. And Jesus on the cross. When I believe in what He did and I confess my sins, He reconciles me to the Father. Yes. He's a mediator. He reaches down for a fallen man and reaches up to a holy God and through His death brings the two together. That's called reconciliation. And the church has been given the ministry of reconciliation. I'm an evangelist. I want to point you to Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's all about Jesus. When he was breathing his last few breaths and he screamed out, it is finished. And the Bible said he lowered his head, gave up his spirit. At that second, in the temple, yes. there was a veil like that, but it was so thick that yokes of ox on both sides pulling could not pull it apart. But the Bible says when Jesus died, that the veil that separated man from the Holy of Holies, it split not from the bottom to the top, but from the top to the bottom, which tells me that God Himself grabbed hold of the veil, which separated us from the Holy of Holies, and He split it wide open. And when He split it wide open, I'm preaching now, He took down a sign that was on that veil, and the sign read, No trespassing. He ripped it down, and He put another sign that said, Come on in, you're welcome. Glory to God. Because when Jesus died, He made a way yes, for us yes, to approach a holy God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we approach a holy God. But what Jesus did for us on the cross, do you know Him? Yes, do you know the forgiveness of sin? Yes. Do you know what it is to go to bed at night and to know if you die during the night, you step into heaven. Not because you're worthy, but because Jesus was worthy. Yes. And he made you worthy through His blood. Do you know Him? Yes. Do you know what it is to have fellowship with Him? Do you know what it is to love Him and to be loved? Yes. Stand to your feet. <clears throat> Bow your heads for just a moment. I won't keep you very long. Father, we bless you. Would someone just come and play the keyboard softly? That's all I ask. Father, we give you praise now. How is it with your soul? Right now, in this building, in the back, on the sides, from the youngest to the oldest, you do not want to die and not know for sure how it is with your soul. I want to ask those on the front pews just to slip all the way to the side. Just slip to the side. If you don't know Jesus, 
If you're not sure tonight of your salvation, I want you to come and just either kneel down at the front pew or just sit at the front pew. Because Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my heavenly Father. Oh, what a deal. All you got to do, you don't confess your sins to me. You talk to, you talk to God in the name of Jesus. And you say, Lord, forgive me. If you've been battled, if the devil just been out of your mind, why don't you come tonight and just settle it? Just settle it. Say, Lord, I received the divine exchange that took place on the cross when you shed your blood and you died for me. If there's somebody here that you're just so thankful for what Jesus did for you on this Good Friday, 2,000 plus years ago and you just want to come and you just want to stand or sit or kneel and just take a moment or two and thank Jesus for what he did for you. He delivered you from a life of sin. Some of us in this building we would already be dead in hell yes, if Jesus had rescued us. Yes, I challenge somebody that just has a heart of appreciation to have the courage to come to the front of this building and just lift your hand and say thank you Jesus I'm unworthy but I thank you you may be worthy to the blood Father you see every heart in this house I pray for that young man Lord who needs you desperately I pray for that family Lord that's gone I pray Jesus that tonight would be a night of change and turnaround in their lives to do something as they come prayer do something Jesus as they cry out hear their cry I want everyone to pray this prayer with me if you say you're not saying say Father in the name of Jesus forgive me of all my sins I receive Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I accept the divine exchange that took place on the cross where Jesus died for me. Lord, I have the privilege now to live for you and to serve you because I love you. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood that cleanses me and forgives me. I bless your holy name. Throughout the building, I want you to lift your hands. I want you to lift your head up toward the heavens. And just on your own, with no one leading you, I want you to open up your mouth, hold it young, and I want you for 30 seconds just to thank Jesus, would you? Come on, open your mouth up. Come on, open your mouth up. Father, we thank you. We bless you, Jesus. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Hallelujah to your precious name. Blessed be Jesus, the Son of the living God. We give you praise and thanksgiving on this Good Friday. We bless you, Lord, what you're doing right here with Pastor Michael and Kathy. We thank you for these people. We believe, Lord, that you're going to move in a way that you've never moved before. Fill up this place with hungry souls. Yes. We give you all the praise. Clap your hands, all you people, and shout. Come on. Clap your hands, all you people. Let's shout to the God of Glory. Glory to God. Bless you, Jesus. Turn and high five quickly, people. Just high five them. Show how cool you are. Show how cool you are. Let me ask you a question. Did anybody learn anything tonight? Did anybody learn anything tonight? Praise God. My blessing. Thank you, Lady. We hope you come back tomorrow night. If you would, if you would, Pastor Michael, let me share one thing. Yes. Right at the ministry, it's a non-profit ministry. It, it supports my wife and I. I've written a couple books. One of them is Pupper Up Baby and Kiss Your Basket by. It's very deep. <laughs> <laughs> it 
the other book is Timeless Truths for Troubled Times. I also have some sermons I've preached. I have Sister Carl Roundtree's, Sister Blanche Roundtree's book, Contented Women. Everything on that table in the lobby is for a donation. We never charge anybody. It's just a donation. God bless you. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful. I feel like I I was full a while back and I just kept eating more and more and more. I'm beginning to think I might be blessed and highly favored. <laughs> Oh, Sister Virginia, though, did verify there was one glaring mistake in the, in the message. I, I hate to, but I just need to bring it up. He, he said he lives in an 18-square-foot house. It's a little bigger than that. No, now, they, they are close, but not that close. I find no other fault in him. <laughs> Like <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'd like to end tonight if you don't mind. Yes, yes, Barter. Sing the old cross. But you bet we can. Yeah, hey, worship team, come on. Don't leave me by myself. Thank you, Lord. Does it cost me more to you now than it did an hour ago?
God, we pray that this Easter will be the most exciting, most wonderful, most enduring in our heart Easter that has ever been touched. That's the right we pray. God, we pray that you lift him above every burden and every care and every buffeting and every struggle because after all, he's blessed and highly favored and now we find we are too.